Okay. Well, folks, uh, Dr. Ferran, Superintendent Crowley, uh, and actually all of the school staff, Nick, uh, Craig, Tony, definitely want to thank you guys. Uh, all the feedback coming coming in has been all positive with our, with our first you know student entrance in the building. So. Um, you know, what I appreciate is, is the parents definitely seem to have uh, the patience that, that we were all hoping for, uh, you know, understanding that at least, again, the feedback I'm getting, you know, they're not, they're not looking for perfection, but they uh, can't say enough about the effort, you know, so uh, in the confidence that anything needs to be tweaked will be tweaked. So I definitely want to thank you guys for that. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, just get to Greg. I can't find my earphones. Really? I, ju I just I gave them to you. I know, but I don't know what I'm doing. I thought I left them here, but I didn't find them. Maybe I left them at the office. I'm trying to find, I'm sorry. I know we've got the uh you know, the, the traditional OPM update, but I'm trying to find the official agenda. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Nate, do you happen to have that in front of you? The invite? No, the actual <laughs> agenda, agenda. Uh, no, I don't um, have the agenda. I've got the OPM no. update. Uh, update. Yeah. I so uh, that's the next item there, is, the, yep, next item is the OPM re report. That's right. Yeah. I wanted to say that, but I said, yeah, let me not go off memory these days. So there's so no Sam, minutes, Craig? Usually we have minutes first. No. I'm going by what Sharon left me. Very good. Um, if it's okay with the chairs, I will share my screen with the OPM updates. Mm -hmm. me. Please do. I just need a uh, manual enable that. And I will say for us, uh, Eric and I walked this morning. It was uh, while we're waiting for me to be able to share this. It was it was great to see even half the school there today. Uh, the parking lot was, you know, and I know the teachers have been coming in for the past, you know, previous days. But to see the existing school activated uh, felt pretty good. All right, Sam, you're good to go. All right. Oh, thank absolutely. You Great. Um, so, and I apologize, we sent out a one version of this and then I picked up a slight uh, calculation error in the budget document. It didn't change any of that document, but um, th th some of the, the detail in the upper lines was incorrect. So I wanted to get that back mm -hmm. out to everybody. Everything else in the document remained the same. Um, so I'll, I'll just walk us through uh, design and permitting coordination. We still have just arrived at, I think we're we're rounding the corner on this. Um, you know, the, the survey has been the thing that has been uh, the, the long lead to get complete so that we can get right out to sign off on everything. Uh, that information went over to them at the end of last week. And uh, we're just waiting for hopefully their final review and comments so we can kind of put this thing to bed. Um, monthly meeting with building officials, as we said, uh, you know, we've talked about this the last couple of months. We have a really good uh, kind of cadence with both the, the new fire marshal uh, as well as uh, Rob Walker in his office uh, to ensure that they are as informed as possible about everything going on. So they are walking the building with us. Uh, that meeting typically includes uh, Gilbane, uh, the OPM team. Eric, does it does AI3 attend those or is it really more Gilbane and the OPM side? It's more field related items. Anything that comes out of it is shared with uh, the design team after the fact via email from the building officials. And any any big kind of concerns or comments coming out of those meetings as of late, Eric, that, that you want to report out? Not to my knowledge. I know the BDA is a good one because the city of East Providence uses repeaters in their fire trucks, which is uncommon. Uh, right. They have no BDAs in the city, uh, which is a bi-directional amp. Um, but other than that, Captain Poland was just verifying that the BDA in our building is going to be compatible and they might need to change a policy for this new building, um, but they don't know that yet until they review the submittal. So, and, and like we said before, these meetings are very just, they're great because the, the AHJ can start to see the physical, you know, realization of the building. 
but then they can help us track things that, you know, that we don't have to wait until the end of the project for them to bring up because they, you know, their analysis will evolve as they're going through and watching construction and they will bring up additional items even though they weren't brought up during the plan review. So the more we engage uh, those city team members, I think the better and I think it's productive for everybody. It helps us get it over the finish line at the end of the project. Sam and Eric, real quick about the BDA. Would you guys be able to have the specs that, for that shared with me uh, at some point? Because I'm familiar with how those systems are if they're being reviewed. Yes. Yep, I can share that email with you. Great, thanks. Uh, excuse me, before we go any further, can I just introduce the new high school principal, Toby Gibbons? He's on this meeting tonight. And, um, he will be a member of this committee moving forward, hopefully. Um, so I just want you to know that he's on the meeting tonight, everyone. All right, welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you. I'm just trying to get my laptop hooked up to my home, home Wi-Fi, so I'm on my phone, so I apologize for that. Uh, commissioning, again, uh, the commissioning team is pretty much on site every week, uh, depending on the type of activity that's going out in the building, as we'll see with the pictures and everything else. They are touching all parts of uh, the MEP, uh, the ongoing envelope work that's happening out there, uh, and that will kind of continue, um, you know, really through a, a lot of the work that's coming up in the next several months. Uh, project milestones, we've got window glazing, uh, that will start uh, this month. Right now, what you see if you've been out there recently is we have the majority of kind of the storefront framework in place. Uh, I would say zone one, Eric, is probably the one that's the least far along on the on the west uh, elevation, um, but no glass in yet. And then no glass or store or kind of curtain wall framing or structure for those much larger window, window assemblies that you see down on the bottom floor or wrapping around the gym or some of those, those more significant areas. Uh, rooftop uh, units for the HVAC will start uh, this month. Uh, and then, you know, kind of looking forward, we're, we're doing, we'll be into finishes. You'll see with some of the pictures, we're already drywalling. There's actually a couple of rooms that are painted, although just primer right now. Uh, and that activity is going to be starting up in the next uh, plus or minus 30 days. Uh, we'll start with start up with some of those units coming in, into the winter uh, and then into that kind of finished work in the mill work and the case work uh, that will be happening really from February almost to the conclusion of the project. Hey, Sam. Yes, sir. From the absence of any issues noted, noted under the commissioning section, can we assume that there are no issues cropping up with you know, all of the check-ins that they're doing? Yeah, I'll, I'll defer to Eric on that, Nate. But I, I think you know we're I think we're going along a, a, on plan. It, obviously, it takes a lot of work. The commissioning agent is always poking <laughs> the collective team to make sure that they're staying in alignment with the plan. But Eric, I don't know if we've seen anything come up, crop up yet. Yeah, nothing out of the normal. I mean, there's no design issues, which is definitely a good thing. You know, the big issues that we run into is like a window detail wrapping. Um, on this job, we have we don't have that, so that's a really good thing. Um, our issues that we're identifying is they wrapped a window, someone climbed through it and ripped the AVB. So they inspect it prior to the window frame going in, and it's just a repair item that they document um, that way, and then we get a picture and written report that it was repaired prior to installing the window. So nothing major, just typical stuff we wouldn't see on a job. Okay, thank you. Uh, so just a snapshot of our kind of uh, real-time financial snapshot on some of the major contingency buckets and allowance buckets, uh, and we'll and we'll do a uh, kind of month, you know, month ending eight eight thirty one uh, at, at the end of the report. But this is a snapshot, live snapshot of where we have the owner's contingency, um, and that's so that's showing ATPs that have been approved and or under review to get you to a total kind of new balance or a projected balance. But again, those have not been, those have not trailed all the way through contract amendments. So this is much more up to date than what I'll show you at the back, which is where we are from a contract status. But we wanna be able to provide you guys with kind of both aspects of that, just so you understand the kind of the financial status of the project. Um, Nate, I know you asked for some graphic depiction of, of, of a way to kind of show this. I think what we're gonna do is 
if, if we're in agreement with the last page and how it looks, we'll probably do it on the month to month as opposed to the real time because it just it's it's hard to kind of get that snapshot defined by you know the 30 days of the month. Um, so we'll have that update for you next month, and and we can take a look at it in advance just to make sure it kind of meets your expectations. No, I think that works. I mean, anything that just shows what the progression is over time, you yeah. know, we can tell we're burning it hot or whatever. I think it's right. useful. Uh, and then just a reminder, owner's contingency, that, that's your money that's held outside of the con construction contract. Um, that's, uh, you know, for you guys to use not only in construction, but we could also make decisions as we go through the process that you might allocate some of that to FF&E. There might be some other areas that, that might need additional funding. Uh, so this source is available for the owner at their discretion. As opposed to the construction contingency in the GMP, which is the next major section, uh, that is Gilbane's contingency. Uh, they both go through the same level of review, uh, but one sits within the, the AIA contract, the other one sits in, in the owner's budget. Uh, and then the last <coughs> uh, grouping of allowances, these are all uh, costs that are spread across all of the individual trade um, RTAs. Uh, so again, those go through the same level of scrutiny depending on the size of that allowance utilization. Uh, and those are there for things that we 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 know, but we are, weren't definable uh, when we bought out those contracts. Uh, but you can see kind of the, the where we are in the trend utilization of these costs. And then at the bottom under owner allowance is, is the breakout of COVID. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that we highlight that as a separate number uh, so that we can kind of see when those costs are coming against it, how we can track it here. Uh, so far, we have not received any formal change orders for COVID-related activities. There are, um, there is documentation that's starting to flow up to the team for our review, and then we'll present those out to the procurement working group, and then it'll ultimately reflect here once that's either been approved or declined or whatever the status, you know, whatever the outcome is of that discussion. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to go through this line by line. I'm actually going to use the pictures to kind of talk about where we are from a construction look ahead. I think that's a better way just visually, but you have the, the four week look ahead is, is in your document. If there are any questions on that, we're happy to talk about those either in this meeting or offline with folks. Uh, we have about 13 trade contractors on site right now, plus or minus, and that, that depends on the day, uh, but fully mobilized as we were last month really across all the major trade groups, uh, you know, starting kind of from the outside in, major site work. Uh, they continue to kind of do a lot of site work between the the western front elevation of the building and the eastern lot line. So all the way back to uh, you know that extension of kind of commercial way where the where those commercial activities happen down below where the bus operation is. <clears throat> they're still you know they're, they're in major earthwork activities underground utility extensions. Um, you can actually start to see the kind of rough grading and utilities being incorporated for the stadium uh, as they're starting to do some of that underground work to bring that subsurface up to ultimately receive uh, you know, the turf and everything else that's gonna happen in there. Um, Halftime House, which is really starting to take shape, that's in this picture up here. Uh, we are under roof. Uh, you know, roughing in uh, mechanical electrical plumbing in that space. And you can really start to see kind of with that building, if you, if you stand on the, you know, anywhere on your, the new building and kind of look out over that, that Eastern view, you can really start to get a sense of how that halftime building is going to relate to the field and also relate to the rest of the, uh, to the rest of the campus. Um, on the building itself, exterior envelope work continues. We're almost 100% on the AVB. That's this material you see here. That's the air vapor barrier that goes on underneath all of the exterior that the finishes. So we're pretty much completely wrapped on the building at this point. Uh, as we mentioned, you can see uh, window framing is in place for all the major, what we'll call the windows or the, the storefront, which is how they're referenced in the package. What you don't see is some of the larger curtain wall and larger storefront in place yet. And those are coming, those will be some of the things that will be coming into the fall. Uh, there is some glass on site, Eric, but not all the glass, right? So we think they're gonna start mobilizing with, with glazing in the next few weeks. Yeah, we have four pallets on site right now. We're told over the next 10 days, we'll receive a large shipment. 
So and then flipping to the interior, uh, this is the southern end of the building here, so you really can start to see the level of finish that's happening. We have drywall in place, uh, they're taping, uh, they're sanding, uh, painting I think is, Eric, 30 days plus or minus out, where we'll, we'll start to see priming in some of those spaces. Probably primer. I mean, they've done all the electric rooms and all the mechanical rooms with the coat of primer and block filler. Uh, classrooms will probably start in about 30 days for primer coat. Okay. But I, I think what the really great thing is you really start to see, um, just to zoom in here a little bit, the, the volume of the space, and this is up on three, uh, or no, this, this Four. is fourth floor. Right yep. Here, right here. So fourth floor, and this is probably three here. Um, Four as well. Oh, it's four as well. Okay. Um, but you start to get a sense of kind of that open, uh, the vault kind of in between the two spaces. Um, and then, you know, the real detailed gritty work that not, not as many people care about, but equally important, which is all the mechanical electrical plumbing work starting to mobilize, uh, come into place and, uh, and start to really feed again from that south to north and top to bottom as far as the progression of the building goes. And just some other uh, exterior views. This is taken actually from, uh, I don't know exactly where, maybe in the end zone or somewhere into the field uh, of, of the new stadium. So you can start to see the material that they're bringing in here is that is that subgrade as we start to build that up. Uh, the west elevation that you see basically from your bus drop off almost, uh, you know, inside your parking lot. But you can start to see kind of the, the level of improvements that are happening throughout the building. And I think um, one place to focus on if you're on site is this corner, this north, or excuse me, southwest corner of the building is really starting to, you're really starting to see kind of the full complement of all the exterior finishes. So all your hardy board is in place, all your, your panels are in place, and then some of your aluminum and other metal millwork and, and PVC millwork that's going up along the building is all starting to come together. So you really get a sense of kind of the aesthetic of all these things in place. And again, with the windows uh, starting at least to be framed out, you can really start to understand kind of the, how that aesthetic is going to develop across the whole building. And then just south and north elevation views. And the other thing you'll see here is while not 100% covered, uh, Gilbane has really been working hard on enclosing, basically temporarily closing in a lot of these openings. And that's going to allow them to bring in the, the temporary heat as the weather starts to turn, that's gonna allow them to continue working in the building uh, and, and still kind of meet the standards of the specifications for adhesives, for paint, for drywall, all those activities that are uh, temperature sensitive. Uh, so you'll see this continue to happen around the building where windows are not in, you'll see this kind of temporary sealing up happening again so they can retain the heat in there. So project budget, I'm just going to zoom out here a little bit. Let's see. So um, again, what we're trying to do each month is do an adjustment column, which is here. And that'll show any movement from the previous month's budget to this budget. So, and, and where you're going to see most of those, most of that movement is this is your owner contingency line item here. We're seeing a change order, so a deduct out of that contingency line item to cover what it was OCO2, which is your first actual uh, change order that had a dollar value to it. OCO1 was a no dollar value, but it was still something that had to process from an administrative standpoint. So this is the first increase that we're going to see to the GMP um, to accommodate that first change order, which is really a series of changes that kind of roll up into that one change order. So that's kind of the economy of multiple ATPs will roll up into a change order and then that change order gets processed once as opposed to doing a change order each time uh, you, you have, you know, in incremental ads of, of scope or ads of work. The majority of the work that's in this 191, uh, I would say, Eric, is uh, there's a fair amount of the uh, Pawtucket Avenue improvements uh, that were not taken, that alt was not executed immediately when we approved the GMP. So this is catching up with those alts that we knew we were going to do, but they just weren't they weren't kind of signed off and 100 100% approved when the when the building committee approved the GMP. 
so not really uh, unexpected work on those larger uh, cost items, but it just had to kind of go through the process and make sure that everything tied out and that we did actually do our review on, on all those as well. Hey, um, Sam, if I could ask yes, a sir. question. Yep. Oh, how often will we see the actual change order capturing the ATPs? Is it going to be like one a month or is it two a month? Or how, how are they tracking? Yeah, I'm going to jump in. So right now, Bill Pepin from Gilbane Building Company is telling us we should receive one a month. And that'll capture all the ATPs from the last change order to that one. It'll capture the ATPs and the ISs that are in scope that aren't cost outside of the GMP. We'll review that in the subcommittee meeting as well. Yep. Thank you. What's yeah, I think Gene, Gene, as you know, you'll it'll be there'll, there'll be a stagger, right? Because the ATPs, the the OCO is trying to catch up with the ATPs, so there's always going to be a a little bit of a stagger there with where you are real time with ATPs and what's actually in whatever change order that, that would come up on that. Well, we'll, basis. But we'll know that based yeah, on correct. That. Oh, yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Eric, what's hey, the yes, stand for? Uh, in scope changes. Okay. Yeah, any in scope change over five thousand dollars needs to be approved through a ATP. Um, under five thousand is a change order and payment requisition review. Okay. And just to scroll past this document, so this is uh, Nate, kind of the beginnings of at least a more of a, a spreadsheet way to track. Uh, adjustments to contingency. I have one of these for uh, the demolition contingency as well as the soft cost contingency. So what this basically does is just give us a history of changes by month. So if we look at July, we had the um, we had the approval of the GMP. This shows the those savings that basically we shifted from the construction budget that increased our uh, contingency up to the six seven. Then we did, uh, then we, you know, the team all agreed that we would actually carve out that million bucks. So that's that tier, bringing it down to five, seven. And then what we see in September is this first OCO002, uh, and that adjustment is there. And then that results in your 566440 balance, which then ties up to here, which is your, your current uh, value in that line item in the budget. And again, Eric's chart up above, which is the ATPs in real time, is always going to look different than what we have here because this is really tying to true contractual changes. Uh, and we won't reflect them here until we have that OCO approved and executed by the owner. So we, we're always going to have a little bit of a you know, difference of information. Can we go back to that document at the beginning? No. Uh, the beginning? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, ATP. Yes, sir. I'm going to scroll, scroll slowly. So where it says uh, ATPs under review, those will be the one, that'll be the value that is not in the current change order, correct? The ATPs, yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm sorry. sorry, go ahead, Eric. So the ATPs under review are the ones that the subcommittee has not had a chance to look at or give an opinion or a recommendation on yet. The or, the, or that we haven't, or that we haven't, uh, validated yet either, Eric, right? I mean, they could Co be any, any state of review. Correct. That's something that's been submitted to our team that is in a limbo state right now that's under review. It's not something that even the subcommittee has seen yet. Okay, so there's nothing in in that uh, owner contingency uh, box that'll represent a value that's not in the current change order. Is that a fair statement? No, because fixed ATPs approved by each EP is a number that would incorporate ATPs that are approved at the subcommittee meeting on Tuesdays, but have not yet been incorporated into a change order through Gilbane yet. Okay, that's that's my point. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So, so that's why it's a live document. Every time we review something, if it gets approved on a Tuesday, it shows up on this log, but it won't show up on a on the change log until a change order has been issued because that's the legal document that changes the contract value where this is just us tracking how we're progressing through every day on the project. Okay. And, oh. and Gene, I, I think it's, it's, it's up to the building committee about, you know, how they want to look at this information. We're happy to cater it down 
you know, if this is if this is too much information because it's in conflict, um, just because of the, the status, then then we can think of different ways also to, to present it out to the group. So no, I think as long as it's clear to everyone what is still outstanding and not reflected in the current change order, I I think it's fair. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll and we'll we'll try to also maybe tie a little bit together a little bit better the the two pieces of information that way it is as clear as it can be given the kind of the difference of uh, of snapshot. Thank you. I, I think I think that for for what I asked for, you know, going back to those uh, spreadsheet excerpts, um, plus when you combine that with what Gene just asked, right? I mean, so we see since August through September. We see 191k adjustment. We can see up on the other page that we got some fairly big ticket items coming in at the same time. Uh, to me, that provides all the big picture that the building committee could need. And if it doesn't sync up 100%, I mean, kind of so be it, right? I mean, it's it's going to be hard to snap the line on any given date. Yeah. Because I would say that my this this piece is more like on the month, the true kind of month end, Nate, more or less. Whereas right. Eric's doc is as of last week, right? Friday, yep. So, so but again, I, I think I think we're we're, you know, obviously it's 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 your guys' document to tell us how you want to see it, but we can start with this and then it can evolve too. So, right. But then the big thing to note here is we're we're well ahead of our contingency here because of the credit we received. Mm -hmm. So even though you see a change out of one hundred ninety-one thousand. We had a credit of, we'll go back to that screen, 2.8 million, which we took a million out, put it in in uh, contingency for demo. So we're, we're tracking well ahead on this. So while we see a change order down the bottom here, um, we haven't even come close to touching our original contingency values. Yeah, and I, and I think Steve as well, just to, to add on to that is some of these changes are all just not yet executed. So there's still changes, but I think at least there were things that were under consideration. They were, you know, budget dependent to, to determine if, if they were going to happen or not. Um, so it does change a little bit the lens that you look at at least some of those, like like the work out in Pawtucket Avenue. We knew we had to do it. Right. It was just a matter of accepting it, form, formally accepting it through the change process. And the ATPs have been in our favor to kind of currently. So we've been doing pretty well with those, except for what's outstanding, which we'll be talking about over the next few weeks, Eric, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. So unless they don't go away. <laughs> unless, there's some, unless there's something super crazy going on there, um, we're, we're doing really well as far as overall yeah. costs. It, pro projects aren't like a bell curve. You know, that's one of the problems where it's, it would be nice if it was predictable. We know where the high is, we know where the low is. It's more like an EKG, you know, where we get these spikes and these really dips and, you know, we go through this whole process where, you know, trending data, it's nice, but it, it tends to be difficult because, you know, you get a change order for $100,000, it's different than a $1,000 change order. So you get these real big spikes and dips rather than a nice bell curve that we prefer to have. Well, the good thing is once you start painting, my experience, the change orders uh, are not, they may be plentiful, but they're not big ticket items. They tend to be owner request items, you right. know, color changes and, you know, can you bump this out for me rather than big changes that, you know, in wall piping was missed. Well, right. And that's a good thing. At that point, we're adding, we're adding to the building. We're using our contingency to make the building better. So all of these things, the more we keep in our contingency, the better we can do with extras to the building as we go. And, and uh, I promise not to try to read any trends into the data that we're seeing here. I would love to see your trending graph if you could produce one. I'd, I'd love to see how it works. Forget it. We'll, we'll, we'll float something over to you, Nate, and you can tell us if it just doesn't meet your standard of, yeah, great. of graphic oh, representation. I think this is right. Do, I mean, it, just a big picture. Do we got to duck? Do we got to move? Do we have to do something? You know, it, or maybe it's just like Eric said, there's an EKG spike. We just live with it and move on because we won't see one next month, you know. Um, just, just, just if we can talk about it, touch on it, if there's something we need to do and go from there. Yeah, and I would say too that the the level of communication that you're building, you know, that the working group has on the procurement side um, is is uh, you guys are really 
involved in the details here. We don't always see that with owners. So I, I think that's a, that's a credit to everybody here and the frequency of it. So, um, you know, some owners want to talk once a month about it. We're talking every week, and then obviously we're doing the report out to the broader building committee. So I think that's that's something that won't hopefully let it get ahead of anybody because the you know meeting every week you're going to see those trends even if they're not projected out in the report on a weekly basis. Yep. That's that's our report. Um, just. One, one other or two other items. Uh, this week is safety week out on, out on property. Uh, Gilbane, as we all know, is a huge uh, proponent of safety on the property, safety on all their work. So there's actually ongoing stuff happening all week, demonstrations, uh, toolbox talks. Uh, they're doing a, a thing at the end of the week uh, with all the trades on site. Uh, so you may see some activities out there that look a little bit different than usual. Um, and that's that's what Gilbane's doing. That they do it at a lot of their big projects. We did it down at the Veterans Home uh, back in 15 and 16. Uh, so it's a good opportunity for everybody to kind of see what's going on, all, all the trades, understand what all the safety issues are, demonstrations, all that kind of stuff. So. And the fire department scheduled to come out Friday morning to do a fire extinguisher training. So if you see a couple trucks on site, don't get too nervous. And then finally, uh, just one other item I didn't put on here, we've had been having discussions about uh, trade parking on property as the, as the school use has kind of come online and, and we've been talking about this really for the past 60 days. Um, the, we've kind of put it back on the trades to figure out how to satisfy any offsite parking requirements. Gilbane is trying to fit as many cars as they can within the, the fence line. And then it has been uh, you know, dictated to the trades that you need to go out and try to figure out if, if you're going to need offsite parking, then you need to go navigate those discussions. So there is uh, some parking that is happening over at PCD. So trades went directly to PCD and asked and kind of negotiated whatever arrangement they did so that they could basically be adjacent to the property. And then uh, the, the district and, and the city, I believe, did offer up uh, public parking locations uh, within, you know, a, a perimeter of, of the property that trades are allowed to go park at as well. Um, so I know the Agawam uh, playground is one of those. Um, I know across the street was at the senior center was online for a couple days, but then was actually taken back off because I think it, it re-upped as a, as a testing site. It had kind of demobilized and now, now they're back mobilized over there. So I think that's now off offline. And then I think Pierce Field is also an option, but probably the least viable just kind of given the, the you know, the distance to the site. So I think the test is going to be in the next few weeks as we see the school population ramp up, especially with seniors and juniors as they are, you know, starting to use some of those spaces more and more. Uh, and then how do we deal with that, that, that issue? We're, we're, we talk about it weekly and, and really daily. Um, but we've also put the onus on Gilbane to work to have their, you know, all the, all their trades figured out. Sam, I watched it today. We were concerned about the lunchtime time frame, and I didn't have any concerns after I watched it today. Eric, your end. Uh, no, Tony, it's been good. The trades have yeah. been clearly directed that they're not allowed to use your side of the fence at all. Period. Um, they have their own private entryway between your property and PCDs, and they've been pretty much obeying that. Mm. I did see a gentleman at 3 o'clock walk by the tennis courts today. Um, the Tarkalis will take care of that for us tomorrow. But other than that, I didn't see any interaction on that side of the fence, and it's been pretty pretty good out there in my opinion. I was more concerned about the lunchtime because we could still have children uh, moving from the CTC to the high school or vice versa, and uh, I watched it by camera and nothing. Yeah, Gilbane actually closed the gate next to the CTC building today, too, just to put that extra reassurance that no one would leave site, even their own employees. So, Thank you. Any other questions out there? I have one, Joel, before we progress. Um, not immediately related to any agenda item, but it is related to the schedule overall. When we did uh, the energy session in July, I think. We talked about a need to uh, get started on the uh, FFE, RFP, 
and and we had set a schedule for that. And I think it was a little bit later in the calendar year, but I just want to make sure we don't lose focus on what that was. Um, I don't know, uh, Eric or uh, Sam, if you've got it off the top of your head, or, or even Jim, if you know, what was the what was the date that we had to start really working on that? So I don't have the calendar in front of me right now, but I know Kathy and her team have been working through the Excel spreadsheets for equipment. They're given a, you know, a document out right now that tries to get a good idea of what each classroom needs in it. Um, once we get these back, they're due back in on the 16th of September. Uh, when we get them back, they'll go back to the design team. So we're still on schedule for that. I can share with you the schedule tomorrow. Um, but as of right now, I don't see any hiccups. Mr. Jordan, do you see anything? We're actually, I should no. have them in my hands today. Nick sent them out to all the department chairs, Nate, and we got all the feedback from the department chairs. I'm going to review them before I send them on to Eric on Wednesday. Yeah, Nate, we have a, um, we're trying to schedule a meeting for the first week of October to review those uh, items that Kathy referred to getting back to our office. And then at that point, we'll have the overall budget for equipment prepared and the overall budget um, for furniture, which are the two main things on the FF and E side of stuff. So if those are good, we're going to start setting up meetings with district leadership to review samples as well as colors of some of the items that they're selecting, selecting, and then uh, we'll be in the mix of preparing the bid documents for them. So we're do, right on schedule, as Eric says. Do we anticipate any pricing, you know, for the bid documents? Do we anticipate a firm price structure or are we going to see equipment and time and materials kind of pricing or, or what are we thinking is going to come in? What you will see is bids for each component of major component of the furniture. For instance, you'll see a bid price for student desks and chairs. You'll see a bid price for equipment items, for art equipment, science equipment, things like that. They'll be grouped together, but there'll be multiple bid packages and bids coming in. Some of them will be by the same vendor, but they'll all be organized into major chunks of categories that will have to be signed as POs and, and purchase orders so that they could start fabrication. Okay, so multiple awards is a likelihood. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Uh, you know, the question if I could know. ask either Sam or Eric, have there been any COVID related issues in the last month? There's been multiple people tested for COVID on site. There's been zero positive results returned back to us. That's good news. That's... How is the new it, system working out? It seems to be working out well. They have all three trailers going, uh, independent thermometers inside each one, one so people can go up and take their temperature. Uh, and the trades are required to have it completed by 630 at their stretch and flex for their first toolbox talk of the morning. And Manny, just to further answer, so there, the protocol in place is that if there is a notice to Gilbane, say from a subcontractor, then they immediately send a letter over to ownership to, to the district that says, we've been notified of X. Uh, we are following our protocols and procedures. They don't obviously give any names or anything like that. And then they they wait to see if there is any, any you know, positive outcome or whatever the outcome is. So. Um, I think it's been, it's been, it's followed a, a predictable process each time we, we hear about something, they immediately send that letter over, and then at least you as the ownership team kind of know about it, Kathy and her team know about it. Yeah, just, just back to ff &E, the only thing I was going to say, Nate, was you'll see probably varying sizes of firms going after this. Some firms will be able to aggregate a lot of these different pieces. Um, and then there'll be some specialties that maybe, you know, it's going to kind of narrow the band a little bit. So it really just depends on the, t the type of furniture, the type of equipment will dictate how many folks go after them and how, how much they kind of put under one big umbrella, even if it's across multiple big packages. Yeah, I think, uh, Sam, my big concern with, and it's not even a big concern, but with regard to the way that we award those packages when they come in, um, how much uncertainty are we looking at in terms of the final price? Um, you know, are we going to be looking at firm fixed price awards? Um, 
or are we going to be looking at some kind of, you know, service oriented time and material stuff associated with it? You know, basically I want to, I want to be able to say, okay, we made uh, 20 wards, 20 different vendors are, you know, comprising all of the, the FF and E. Um, so, you know, what's, what's the dollar value of that? Are we going to be able to have that site picture or is it going to be kind of subject to, well, you know, they had to be on site for 12 hours or 14 hours or, or whatever it might be. I mean, I'll let, I'll let Jim answer in more detail, but it, it's, it's a, it's a lump sum number. Um, unless, you know, unless there's a, the only thing I think we, there could be exposure out there and Jimmy, you, you know, you're more in tune to this, but is just, is there any supply chain disruption if something else happens pandemic wise, right? So I, I think that's the thing that, that I think I've, I've been thinking about because we saw it last spring. Granted, you know, will we see as much of a, of, of a hiccup as we did last spring? I don't know. Um, but they will price in whatever, you know, variability and material availability and everything else into that number. So it's going to be an all in number that, that's a lump sum. Right, Sam. It's not a time and materials bid. It's actually a fixed price bid for the product. But just to give you a heads up, we are seeing or our consultants are seeing, we have two FF&E consultants on this project, and they're both seeing price increases from what they projected on other projects that are ahead of schedule for you. So we're trying to anticipate another additional price increase on the pricing. And just the cost of materials is going up at this point, especially metal costs. So, um, you know, that's why we got to take a close look at what the requests are from the district, the final request, and make sure it still works within the budget that we have for the project. Hey, Jim, when we're putting all this stuff out to bid, I'm just kind of brainstorming here. Uh, is it a way to, uh, with these increases in pricing, um, figure out what is COVID related as far as um, what, you know, the manufacturer is seeing? I, I haven't gotten any answer about if it's COVID related, it's really material supply related. And we've been hearing indications that the issues with China are coming into play on some of these materials. So um, I wouldn't say it's COVID at this point, but that could have creep into the prices with labor shortages possibly, but I haven't heard that from the consultants yet. It's really, they're pointing to bids that they've opened in the last three to four months that have been higher than they anticipated. And they had to use a contingency in their budgets to cover those costs. So they're anticipating that kind of increase continuing and they're projecting those increased costs for this project. As we go through, we should keep that in the back of our mind if we can, you know, when we're talking to suppliers and so forth, find out, you know, when, it, when we sit down and negotiate final pricing, is any of this increase from uh, COVID related? Just to keep, we'll it, do. keep yep. it on mind. Okay, any other questions? That's good. Well, um, we're all sent uh, the invoices and and I think the minutes went in that package, which is why it's not on this agenda now so that it was all approved by the school committee um, at our recent meeting. So I appreciate you guys, uh, uh, the vast majority that reviewed and, and approved and uh, uh, to no surprise, everything you know went through just fine. Um, so that leaves us with, there's not Joel, any, any wanna, other- Joel, do you wanna yeah. take a formal vote, have it on record just so there isn't a problem? Because I'll make the motion to approve all the- uh, Bill. Thank you, Tony. Do you think it's necessary? Uh, I think, I mean, I've, my understanding, and, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take someone else's input on that, but I mean, it was, it was recorded uh, through Sharon okay. um, with the approvals, and uh, it was presented to the school committee yep. based on those, um, you know, that, that recorded approval. So at this point, I think it would be a moot point. Not so, a problem. But, Valid question, unless someone has another opinion on that. Uh, I concur, right? I mean, we're there to advise the school committee. How they get that advice is sort of up to them. They've made the decision to pay the invoices. We move on, I think. 
Okay. Um, and um, I just, you know, wanted to throw it out there. Yeah, no, it's yeah, no, no, no. Catch. Fair question. Yeah. Um, I will say, Ben, I left you out of the, uh, the, the praise that I was giving to the district folks because I know IT was uh, a huge part of that. So I didn't want to, didn't want to overlook the team that you guys have and the work you did. Um, next issue is uh, next item on the, on the docket is for the next meeting. Uh, which I believe, you know, typically would be what I think October 12th, which is a holiday. Um, not sure if it's a real holiday. I was, you know, you know Columbus Day. Um, so I don't know if that presents an issue for everyone or anyone. If, uh, you know, if the group feels like that day is not going to work, then we can discuss now. Any issues with October 12th, that Monday, Columbus Day? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good. It makes it even easier for me. <laughs> All right, so then we'll, we'll stick with that date. October 12th will be the next building committee date. Uh, and as Superintendent Crowley mentioned, welcome Principal Gibbons to the group. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a high expectations, but uh, just as much support. Um, Eric, we're going to add him to, uh, I think this Thursday is our, ske yes. our scheduled walkthrough. So uh, I already told the superintendent that she's going to let him go for a little bit Thursday morning. And uh, he's going to come boots boots and, and proper gear. PPE, please. Uh, That's the most important yeah. thing. All right, so gloves, boots, long pants. Um, we can Get you a hard hat, glasses. He's already got it. It's hot. I can get you everything but pants and boots. So there you go. <laughs> I'll bring my own pants. No worries. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Principal Gibbons. I, I don't. I don't think I'll be showing up to school in shorts or anything else. <laughs> Once you get to year two, don't ask for anything because uh, uh, you, you got a new school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a good. Uh... I'm give you a timeline, though. I'm going to give you a time. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna follow the, the schedule as well as as you do when you're running. You know. So. Um, no. So if there's uh if there's nothing else to discuss, again, thank everyone. I see Craig is actually. Yep, hang thing. on. Hang on. Uh, one other item that we need to do is to approve the minutes from August 10th, 2020. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Fuel. Second. Thank Second you. By Mr. Oakland. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can you post that? Right. So do we have to officially put Toby on, vote Toby on? Yes. So the, uh, we, we have to have the school committee uh, doing uh, approve the updated membership list. So, um, yeah, we'll submit basically a replacement uh, of Principal Wallace with Principal Gibbons. So, uh, do, we'll that do, the, do we have to? I mean, I think the principal is a requirement per the building committee requirements anyway. Yeah. Least, the resident mm -hmm. stuff to rise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll good point. Yeah. The other yeah. All right. So Kathy's going to get the resume of Principal Gibbons and submit yes. it to ride. Uh, and then, and then uh, I know Sharon's going to take minutes on this, but I'm sure Craig will follow up with her. I see him jotting stuff down, but if we can, um, if we can make sure that on the uh, next school committee meeting that we have um, that change of membership list mm -hmm. on the agenda, please. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions again? No? All right, so I will uh, take a motion to adjourn by anyone that's interested. So moved. Mr. Wagan. Any? Do we have a second? A second. Who was that? Steve. All right, that was Mr. Amoroso. All right. So uh, again, motion is second. All in favor of journey? Aye. 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 And uh, folks, again, evening, thanks everybody. again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great, uh, have a great month. And call mm -hmm. us if you need us. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Night.